Okay, so I, we asked the question, why study Ephesians? And the first reason we said was, Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. The fact is that the Apostle Paul, when he begins the book of Ephesians, he says, Paulus Apostolos Christo Jesu, dia telematos, telematos theu, tois hagiois, tois usin. En Efeso, kai Christus en Christo Jesu. Charis humen, kai erne, apo theu patros hemon, kai curio Jesu Christus. Now if we look at those words which he uses, he starts, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, through the will of God, to the saints being in Ephesus, in some copies of this text, and faithful in Christ Jesus, or Christo Jesu. Grace to you and peace. Now, does he say grace to you and peace from me? No. He says, grace to you and peace from God the Father of us and the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Yahweh Yesu the Mashiach. Which means Paul claims that he is speaking from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He's not just speaking on his own authority. This is then part of the word of God. How can he say grace to you from God? And peace from God because he speaks as a representative of God to these saints and believers in Ephesus and in the areas of Asia where this letter is being sent and to the rest of us here in the Gentile world all over the earth amen so the mouth of God has given Paul the authority to speak the second thing is, the book of Ephesians contains incredible revelation regarding our identity as saints. It speaks of the Gentile identity and those who believed in Christ first, the Israelite identity. But it's sent to the Gentile, the Goyim, people who have been coming out from the Goyim into the communion of saints. Hallelujah or Hagios, or in one Hebrew translation, Kedoshim, or in another, Hasidim. But the point is that these are people set apart in the plan of God by coming in to Christ. And the whole focus is on the fact that in Christ, Everything Yahqua is doing in Mashiach, everything Yahqua is doing was planned before the foundation of the world. He planned that Mashiach would be seated at his right hand side, and when we enter into Mashiach, that means that God was planning before the foundation of the world that we would be seated at his right hand. Amen. If Mashiach is a king, then we are in the king. Hallelujah. If Mashiach is a priest, then we are in the priest. Hallelujah. If Mashiach is a prophet, then we are in the prophet. Those blessings which rest on Mashiach rest on us because we are in him. And all of God Yahweh's planning was done when he planned Mashiach's reign over heaven and earth. And in bringing together the Jew or the people of Israel and the Goyim or the people of the nations. Ephesians contains revelation given to Paul which at first was not permitted to be revealed to mankind but around 1662 AD he feels he is permitted to reveal it. Amen? So this is what was a secret revelation, a sealed revelation but now, through the apostles and prophets of the New Testament, this message is going out. And it is dynamite. Praise God. Ephesians contains prayers that can lead to power, strength, 
to obey God and to do his will, to survive persecution, to overcome the enemy, but also revelation to understand what God's will is. I mean, because Paul in the book of Ephesians is revealing the plan of God which was planned before the world's foundation. Amen. There are a number of themes which are in this book. For example, Ephesians deals with the revelation of the secret of the nature of the church. It deals with the church life in heavenly places. Amen. Those first three chapters are talking about our position in heavenly places and our position in the presence of Yahuwah. Yes, our position in heavenly places. It goes through all the different things we have and what is according to our nature in heavenly places. First it deals with those who first believed in Christ. And then Paul goes on to talk about the Gentiles who later heard the word of truth and the good news of their salvation and received it. Praise God. And so it's dealing with heavenness. Now, also, Ephesians deals with themes of grace and glory. Chesed and kavod. Chanun and kavod. Hallelujah. God planned all of these things in Christ for the glory of his grace. Amen. His grace would be glorified. There was a time when God was being so kind to me and I wondered why. And I asked him, why are you being so kind to me? Yahuwah said to me, in my heart, it is my grace for my glory. That gave me a much greater understanding of this relationship of grace and glory which can transform our lives. We need to pray for grace. Because it is the grace of God which makes us what we are. It is the grace of God which made the Apostle Paul an apostle and gave him ability to turn around nations from idolatry to the living God, Yahweh. Amen? It was the grace of God working with him that enabled him to do the apostolic works he did. We need the grace of God working with us. It is by grace we are saved. Through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. We stand in this grace by faith. Amen? By faith, we have entered into the grace whereby we are seated in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus, far above every principality, power, authority, dominion, and every name that is named in this age and in the age to come. It is by grace. We need the revelation of the grace of God, which is going to lead to the glory of God in our lives. When Christ, who is our life, appears, our life is hidden with Christ in God. This is from Colossians now. When Christ, who is our life, appears, we will appear with him in glory. The destination of the saint, the destination of the believer in Jesus Christ, in Yahushua, Yahusha, Mashiach, is glory. It's glory. And the only way we are going to get that glory, get to that state of glory, get to the place of glory, his grace. Amen. Undeserved favor. Undeserved mercy. 